What's up, hi, how's it going? Uh, holy freaking smokes. It's been a while. I can explain. Let's see. Going all the way back to when was the last time I vlogged? Christmas time? Yeah, so we touched on we ran CIM, right? December 4th, right after I got home. We ran CIM, my first marathon. Cool. Two weeks later, we ran my first ultra marathon at Woodside Ramble. Cool. Went great. Christmas, great. The next day, not so great. So I'm going to be working on um, putting my ribbons and names and stuff on my blues because on Monday, I start FTAC. I just went and got myself a fresh haircut because it was getting a little long um sure um yeah so i'm gonna be doing that while i explain but i do need to explain okay right so the day after christmas i think was relatively normal um nothing really crazy happened except that evening i noticed Zeke hadn't been eating anything. He hadn't drank anything really. He was like acting really weird. He kept going out and laying out on the back patio, like just laid there, just laid out in the cold and the wind and he would just lay there. And it was really weird. And then when he was inside, he would be panting really hard. And then he would go from like slow breathing. He'd just be like laying there normal to all of a sudden he would sit up and he couldn't catch his breath. So I kept an eye on him for the rest of that day. I was obviously like, worried about him I kept trying to get him to like get up on the couch with me and just lay down like I was like bro you just need to like I just need you to lay down with me you just need to like relax if you're not feeling good like I don't know what's going on but clearly something's not right so just come and lay with me and he didn't even really want to lay down Ugh! I hate poking through these these are so dull how are these supposed to poke through here he like couldn't get comfortable he didn't want to lay down wasn't feeling like Zeke Bear. He didn't want to play fetch. He didn't want his toys. He didn't want treats. He didn't want anything. So that night I slept out on the couch with him. There we go. Son of a. In my mind, like when dogs keep going outside, right? Like they keep going out and laying by themselves. A lot of the time, especially I guess for like good dogs, if they keep going out and laying by themselves, it's like an indicator that like they don't want to bother you and they're just going to go out on their own and die by themselves. So in my mind, I was like, don't let him just go and lay by himself. Like, don't let him give up. So I woke up, I think at like five, Travis had to work that day and Zeke wasn't on the couch with me. I looked outside, he wasn't outside. So I like headed back toward our bedroom because Travis, you know, slept in our bedroom like a normal person. Zeke was laying in the office where we had the kennel. He was just laying in there, laying in their kennel but he was wet, like he had been outside and it started raining. So I was like, cool, how long was he laying outside? Like, did he lay there and just get rained on for a long time? And then he got up or like, you know, it just came out of nowhere and it rained on him. So he came inside, like how miserable was he to just be like laying outside and it just was raining on him and he just didn't care. That wasn't good. That was a good indicator that, you know, um, he was not doing so well. Come on. All right, that one looks a little high son of a so Travis went to work and I brought Zeke back out on the couch with me tried to get him comfortable I gave him some water and he like slurped it down really quick like he had never had water before and he was just thirsting to death and I felt so bad and he laid down for a little bit and then would like keep switching positions. He'd keep rolling from like one side to the other. And like he would sit up and start panting a lot. He was panting, but like it wasn't like happy panting. It was like he couldn't breathe panting. I was like asleep off and on until nine, which was when the vet opened up. So I called our vet and they were like, um, yeah, that sounds kind of emergent. You should, they said, we, we recommend you contacting a vet hospital. Um, but I'm gonna talk to our doctors and see if they have any time or like what they recommend. So then she called me back like 20 minutes later and I had already called UC Davis and they said, uh, yeah, that doesn't sound good. Go ahead and bring him in. Um, so I had already told Travis like, hey, I'm gonna start getting him ready. I'm gonna get Calvin ready. We're gonna start getting ready and come pick you up and then take Zeke. Because for 
a vet hospital as busy and like big as UC Davis is, like they're like really well known. Like people will fly from the East Coast with their pets to go to UC Davis to be seen by the vets there. So I was like, if they can get us in within the next hour, like that's not a good sign. We didn't let these two say goodbye to each other. We packed everything up, packed Zeke up, went and got Travis from work, and then we drove to UC Davis. We took Zeke in. <clears throat> he was, he did not want to get out of the car. He didn't want to walk in. He kept trying to stop as we were walking in. Um, he laid down in the elevator because you walk in this building and then on the second floor is where the clinic is, or the hospital portion is. So you, we went, we took the elevator. There was no way he was going to take the stairs. He was like panting, like he couldn't catch his breath, not like he's happy. Like there's a big difference between like happy Zeke and like he's panting because he can't breathe. And he definitely couldn't breathe. Travis went and sat down with him and I went and checked us in. And they came out and talked to us about him and stuff and got some more information and then they took him back. They said they were going to um, get some blood from him to see what was going on. They were going to uh, maybe do some x-rays or ultrasounds to see if they could figure out what was going on with him. So they said that um, if we just wanted to kind of stay in the area, in like the Davis area, um, and not go home, that would probably be best because they were gonna, um, we had to pay, it was like 300 or $500 just to be seen. It was $300 just to be seen. And then um, they quoted us like, this is about how much all the testing is gonna cost and everything because um, they didn't know what was wrong. They figured if it was like an infection, because I thought it was still like his ear, because since before I left for basic, he had like this ear infection that we couldn't get to go away. Um, we took him to the doctor multiple times, like they couldn't figure it out. They gave us different medications for him, couldn't figure it out. Um, so we thought maybe it had something to do with that. Um, they said they were gonna run a bunch of tests. They would call us once the doctor like had a better idea of what exactly their treatment plan was gonna be. So we got no further than into town and at Starbucks, the doctor called and said, hey, this is kind of, you know, what we're looking at. They were gonna do, they thought it was something in his belly that they were gonna do like an exploratory kind of surgery to see what was going on in there um, to figure out what was causing him those issues. Um, and I said, yeah, go ahead and do it. Um, she's like, you can probably pick him up either tomorrow or the next day, but like this is about how much it's gonna cost, so we'll call you again, the front desk will call you, we'll get payment from you, we'll go ahead and proceed, and then we'll let you know when he's ready to be picked up. And I said, okay, all right, do what you need to do. Like, that's my boy, we're gonna take care of him. Like, if it can be fixed, we're gonna fix it. We got our coffee, we headed home. We got about halfway home before we got another phone call. Actually, no, we had just gotten back on base. We got another phone call from the same vet. Um, she said that she went off of a hunch that because of the way he was breathing, because of the rigidity of his um, abdomen and the way he was like lethargic, couldn't breathe, wasn't eating anything, but was super thirsty. She went off of gut instinct and did an ultrasound of his abdomen, found he had a bunch of free fluid in his abdomen. Long story short, basically he'd been taking joint pills and like pain medicine for probably the last few years. I think he'd always pretty much had meloxicam. He was prescribed it in Germany. He's gotten it prescribed here. Like he's just always been on meloxicam for pain and inflammation and stuff. Basically, she thinks that always taking that medicine caused um, a hole to develop in his stomach or his intestines somewhere, like an ulcer, and then just kept eating away at it until he had a physical hole in either his stomach or his, his intestines somewhere that was letting when he would eat or drink, it was causing that to just go straight into his abdomen. It was just collecting in his abdomen and it got harder, it got harder and harder for him to breathe over the past, you know, 12 hours or whatever because the night before I gave him water because he wasn't eating or drinking anything. So I'm like, here, drink some water. And he drank that water so fast. I gave him a, like a coffee cup. He drank the whole thing. 
So I got him more and he drank like half of it. And then in the morning when I woke up, had found he was outside and everything, brought him back onto the couch, I gave him more water. I was helping him, but that actually made it harder for him to breathe because that was going down into his stomach, like physical organ stomach, straight into his abdomen. It wasn't like going through his body. It was collecting in his abdomen and then that was putting pressure on his lungs. So that was actually making it harder for him to breathe. And that's why after he was drinking, it was making it harder and harder for him to breathe and he couldn't get comfortable is because there was more of that collecting and more pressure, putting pressure on his lungs so he couldn't breathe. She called and explained all of that um, and said, we can do this surgery. It will cost about $12,000 but there's a 50% chance that it will actually even work. And we don't know like what exactly caused it and if it would happen again if he just kept taking the meloxicam for his pain. And I wasn't gonna not give him pain meds for his hips and his joints and stuff because he's a hefty boy. We all know he's been limping for like the last two years. So it was like figure out the quality of life he was gonna have if we did this surgery versus put him out of that pain. And if we did the surgery, say the surgery worked flawlessly, he couldn't really take that pain med anymore without me being like, oh crap, like when's this gonna happen again? When's it gonna cause him to not be able to breathe again because he has free fluid in his abdomen? And then what kind of life is that for him? Because he can't play fetch anymore. Like I would have to literally stop playing fetch with him, you know, do the surgery and then not be able to give him pain meds anymore or, you know, really have to stop playing fetch with him, have to stop playing with him, which is what he loved. There wasn't really a good answer. Uh, we didn't really have a good option of what we were going to do other than there's no way we're going to keep putting him through this pain because even like just laying in the waiting room that's not Zeke like that's not he wasn't happy anymore he wasn't wagging his tail anymore so we made the decision we said all right we're going to put him out of pain we're just going to put him down so we drove back up there they brought him into a little room with us and I don't know if like they had already given him some pain meds or if it was just like, you know, he was slowly diminishing, but the way he came into that room and wasn't wagging his tail, he wasn't happy to see us. He walked in and walked straight past all of us into the corner and tried to lay down in the corner. Like, you know, he just didn't want to bother us or anything. Ooh, that's the hard part was was that last bit of it because I'm trying not to remember him as like that hot because you know Zeke was always so happy he was chasing Poncho around he was chasing Cal around he was chasing his toys and his balls around like he was always happy it didn't matter what was happening to him he was always happy so remembering that short little bit of him that was like I kept saying this isn't Zeke like this isn't him anymore we can't we can't keep putting him through this for us like there's no way I can be so selfish as to make him be this version of himself for me the doctor sat in there with us um, she kind of explained what was gonna happen basically they like overdosed him essentially where he was just gonna go to sleep. It was gonna be really fast. He was just gonna go to sleep and that was it. So we sat there with him and we petted him and we loved on him and we cried on him. We petted his ears and scratched him in all the places he loved, on his butt and on his belly. And we said goodbye to him. The doctor was really amazing. Um, she even started crying because you know how do you how do you deal with that but whoo it was a lot and I try not to think of that but every once in a while like obviously I'm doing it right now I think of him like that and then like when we went to leave him just laying there like he looked like he was just sleeping on the floor but thinking of that like that was him you know so that was rough um, that really sucked. I haven't been wanting to make this video, which is why I hadn't posted anything. That's where I've been, um, kind of just trying to, you know, I know everyone loves Zeke. Like, literally, 
strangers loved Zeke. Like this was the best dog. Was the best dog. And now we got a close second that's in here chewing on his paws. What's going on with your paw, friend? What's going on with your paw? Quit chewing on it, okay? Quit chewing on your paws. One of my biggest regrets with that, you're so precious, is we didn't let the boys say goodbye to each other. Cause I honestly thought we were gonna be bringing Zeke home. I didn't think, like I kept saying, we're gonna go get you better, Zeke. We're gonna go get you better. We're gonna take you to the doctor so you can come home and feel better. I didn't think he wasn't ever gonna come home. I wasn't ready for that to be the time. He never came home again. I do really regret that. Even though they're just dogs. They were best friends. Pancho has been a mess since we lost Ziggy. Like, I left, and then he lost Zeke, and now Travis is gone. Haven't even gotten to that part yet. If you follow me on social media, like, you know all of this. But Pancho has been a mess. I go to work every day, and I'll watch the blink camera, and sometimes he's just howling. All day long, he just howls and cries, and I feel so bad because he doesn't have his best friend and so that breaks my heart i didn't let them say goodbye to each other not that i i don't know that they would know to say goodbye to each other but you know i just feel so bad i know that was your best friend right that's what's been going on right right <laughs> um i'm gonna try to make another video here soon of everything that's happened since then because there's been a lot um i've ran in a few more 50ks i have another one coming up in about a week and a half and then i have my 50 miler coming up travis deployed yeah he's gone um yeah so it's been it's been a whole thing um we've been busy i haven't wanted to make this video because i haven't wanted to talk about it because to be honest i miss zeke so friggin' much some days. Like, it's crazy how much you can miss a dog. But, Pancho's really stepped up. He's been my boy lately. Huh? You been my boy? <laughs> he just has so much personality. Look at him. <laughs> You're just such a good boy. Like, look how cute you are. Look how cute you are. You're just so cute. Oh. That's where we've been. Um, I didn't get very far on getting my blues set up because I was distracted with trying to talk. And <sighs> you're so handsome. You're so handsome. Rachel got this made for us. We have our Ziki shelf here that has a really great picture of him. We have his collar here. We have his ashes and some of his fur have a paw print. Um, we got him cremated so he could come home with us. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Before now, that is that. And we'll see you when we see you. Bye.